know him. I know how he thinks. You fucked up. He'll hurt you like anybody. Oh, Sonny, trust me. That man can't trust anybody. You don't have to better. How many times do I have to tell you? People don't respect him. They fear him. It's a big difference. You want to be somebody? Be somebody who works for a living. All right, Bongiorno, it's your boy, Big Rich. Thursday, September 26th, new mob stories. Let's get it popping. First of all, quick update. Went to the doctor yesterday Yesterday to get the surgery done. The skivats that works there told me that she forgot to get the fucking authorization from the fucking insurance company. She, she thought she did it already. I said, bitch, you better get the fuck on your job. See, I did my job. I showed up. You're supposed to do your job and make a phone call. Bitch sucks her teeth. Oh, now I got to call the insurance company. What the fuck are you getting paid for, bitch? Anyway, mom stories. So I didn't get my surgery done. I'll let you guys know when I get it done. Thank you for all the well wishes. I appreciate it. Uh, I guess sometime next week I got to call and we'll get it done. But I'll have to get it done before the year's up. Let's get right into business. New articles right out the fucking... Pages of gangland. Feds do it again. Another monumental screw up in the Meldish murder case. It looks like this. Federal prosecutors recently informed Lucchese mobster Christopher Landonio, the alleged getaway driver in the rub out and one of the defendants, that his late attorney had been linked to both drug dealing and a failed escape plot. Normally, that would require Landonio to find a new lawyer. Landania, of course, already has a new lawyer since the original counsel, the late great Charles Carnesi, died seven months ago. More curious is that the added revelation that the feds first heard this allegation more than two years ago, yet said nothing until now, days before the start of the trial. Even more curious is the fact that the source of the story is a mentally challenged jailhouse informer who has told prosecutors pretty much all they wanted to hear about the five defendants charged in the killing. And the snitch, the Skrasiav, is a serial bank robber with a lifelong drug problem who tried to commit suicide during the same week he was telling the feds his tale about the late Carnesi. He's a fucking loser. Under the law which is pretty crystal clear on this issue, the feds were required to tell Landonio about his problem back in August of 2017 when their witness first offered the charge. His common lawyer, John Marangolo, says the government's decision to withhold that info for 25 months was a foul deed at the highest order, one that makes it impossible for Landonio to get a fair trial now. Putting aside the credibility of a snitch, whose integrity has been publicly panned by Judge Kathy Seibel, the law on the subject has been unchanged for decades. In his court filing, Merengolo cited a 1993 decision by the Second Circuit Court of Appeals, which threw out the conviction of a man whose lawyer was implicated in the same crimes as his client. In that case, the court ruled that once a government witness implicates defense counsel in a related crime, the resultant conflict so permeates the defense that no meaningful waiver can be obtained and stated that in future cases, prosecutors should immediately inform the court about any conflict they learn about and that the defendant should get a new attorney. In its unanimous ruling, the court noted that was required because virtually every aspect of the lawyer's representation of the defendant would be affected by the counsel's fear of and desire to avoid criminal charges or, or even the reputational damage from an unfounded but ostensibly plausible accusation. The six prosecutors who have been involved in the case, Scott Hartman, Jennifer Burns, Jacqueline Kelly, Hagen Scotton, Celia Cohen, and Alexandra Rothman, as well as FBI agents Theodore Otto and Christopher Munger, apparently believe the allegations. But even so, they have to explain today to Judge Seibel why none of them thought to alert the court about them for 25 months. Marangolo says that the government purposely concealed for over two years the operative facts about the alleged conflict of interest when it was duty-bound to timely apprise the court and the defense of such facts. He has asked Cybele 
for a 60-day adjournment of the trial. The lawyers claim they need time to conduct the effective pretrial investigation into the allegations while the judge decides how to address this conduct by the government to remain silent about allegations involving his client's former attorney until the eve of the trial. What's more bizarre about the government's failure to notify Landano of possible conflict of interest between him and Carnesi for more than two years is that the prosecution in the case have asked Cybell to conduct at least five other hearings involving actual and possible conflicts of interest between other defendants and their attorneys, especially since one of the conflicts of interest resulted in a special hearing involving lawyer Marangola and Landanio based on two-year-old allegations the feds have gotten from the same jailhouse snitch who had fingered Carnesi as a criminal, a twice-convicted bank robber named David Evangelista, who is referred to as CW3 in court filings. That occurred when Marangolo, under prodding by the judge, disclosed that Landanio's parents had paid his legal fees. Once the lawyer did that, the prosecutors alleged that the mobster's parents were also involved in crimes with their son and that there was a possible conflict of interest between them and their son since they were paying Marangolo. Thus, while openly pressing all types of potential conflicts, Marangola wrote prosecutors who were told by Evangelista in 2017 that Carnassi and Londonio's parents were co-conspirators and joint accomplices and the very charges alleged against Mr. Londonio never sought a hearing regarding Carnassi's representation of Londonio. The government's late disclosure of such material information requires a continuance to also guarantee that Landanio had effective assistance of counsel during all critical stages of the case, since according to Evangelista, Carnesi was involved as an unindicted co-conspirator, unindicted co-conspirator in virtually every count for which for which Mr. Landanio will be tried. Marangolo wrote, "The trial of Landonio, former acting boss Matthew Maddie Madonna, mob associate Terence Terry Caldwell, and underboss Stephen Stevie Wonder Crea, who are all charged with the 2013 murder of Meldish and various other crimes, including attempted murder, extortion, loan sharking, drug dealing, labor racketeering, and illegal gambling, is slated to begin next month on October 2nd. You know, we'll be on that shit heavy. The fifth defendant implicated in the murder by Evangelista, Stephen Stevie Jr. Crea, copped a guilty plea to various other charges, calling for up to 13 years in prison after refusing a plea deal for 10 years if he would admit a role in the Meldish murder. So if he would have admitted to a role in the murder, he would have got 10 years, but he'd rather take the 13 and say, hey, you know, that he wasn't involved. I hear him. Fuck it. There's little doubt that Judge Seibel, who has not been shy about criticizing several prior missteps and follow-ups by the prosecutors in the 31-month-old case, will not be happy about their alleged failures cited by Marangolo. But it's unlikely that the judge will put the trial off, certainly not for 60 days. It's hard to predict what sanctions, if any, the judge might impose. But off the top, since Carnesi can no longer defend himself, his reputation or his former client blocking Evangelista from mentioning Carnesi's alleged role in any of Landanio's crimes might be a nice one. So like I said, feds do it again, another monumental screw up in the Meldish murder case and the feds decided to hold out information for two years and now are bringing it back to light because, you know, the feds are also fucking dirty. Let me tell you something. The government are the biggest gangsters in the fucking world. So if the government hires the FBI to protect them, what does that make the FBI? Thank you very much. Everybody have a great morning. Salute, Bongiorno, Big Rich, Shattered, Gangland, and of course, Jerry Capisci. Salute. We'll be back with another story. Like, comment, share, subscribe. You know how we do salute.